Hey, check this out. Yeah. Where'd you get it? What are you doing? Yeah, where oh, anyone knows that. That's really Star Joe. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. What about this one? Oh, it's Willie Aiken. No, no it's Reggie Jackson. Oh. Yeah. Reggie, Reggie, Reggie. Reggie. Okay. Woo! Check this out. You guys, watch this. Oh, I know. Oh, oh, yeah. Pete oh, Rose. They're red knives. You're so Pete predictable, Rose. Rick. It's Pete Rose. Now, who is this? Who's that? 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 towards the pitcher, get this elbow up just a little bit higher. Now you're in position. But really, Louie, it'd be kind of silly for you to try to imitate me and try to go up here and hit home runs. You know, little guys should concentrate on making contact. They shouldn't have to worry about trying to hit for home runs. Well, some little guys hit home runs. No, they don't, Louie. You have to be big to be a ball player. No, you don't. There are good ball players who are small. That's right, Rick. Don't sell him short. Baseball players come in all sizes. Mel Ott was small, so he kicked his leg to get added power. And it worked for 511 home runs. Bobby Shantz was only 5 feet 6 inches, but he pitched for 16 years and once won 24 games. Pee Wee Reese was an all-star shortstop and base stealer. So were Louis Aparicio and Maury Wells. They called Jimmy Wynn the toy cannon because even though he was small, he still sent baseballs flying. Don't forget little Joe Morgan, who was the National League's most valuable player twice in a row. Pine Size Expo, Tim Raines is a demon on the base pass and an acrobat in the outfield. The same goes for Orioles center fielder, Al Bumbry. At five feet, four inches, Freddie Pawtek is the smallest player in the majors, but in one game against the Boston Red Sox, Freddie hit three big home runs. So you see, Rick, you don't have to be a big guy to play baseball. Johnny, tell him about Sadaharo. He was small and he was a great player. He can't be any good. I've never even heard of him. Well, you know, the American papers don't cover Japanese baseball. But that doesn't mean they don't play a good brand of baseball. Sadaharo O is a king over there. And actually, baseball is their number one sport. It's been almost 50 years since the major leaguers went over on a tour to teach them the game of baseball, and since that time, it has taken over completely. There are still teams going over there every year. In fact, the Reds went over there in 1977, and another all-star team in 79. Next year, another team will go, because they love to see American baseball and the American players. When major leaguers show up, Japanese fans turn out to cheer their favorites. Hey, that looks like you, Freddie. Even with the big leaguers there, the biggest sensation was a green monster named the Philly Fanatic, who's funny in any language.
The entertainment may be the same, but they do a few things differently in Japanese ballpark, like the way they clean the plate, catching batting practice, and satisfying their appetites. Beware baseball fans and players. Using chopsticks may be tougher than batting against Tom Zeaver. Watch Steve Garvey of the Dodgers give it a try. The cleanup hitter is Pittsburgh's Dave Parker. This is one of the first times I've ever used chopsticks to eat with. So wrap it as so, just like spaghetti. Hold it up, as you may see. Cabbage hammer. Put it in the water there. Saying shabu shabu. I guess it means good luck. I hope it does. I can use it for next season. As so, you put it in the bowl. Roll it around in the bowl. Get the sauce in there well. Bring the bowl and the chopsticks and the shabu shabu to your mouth. And enjoy. Like Dave Parker, Japanese baseball fans catch on in a hurry. American teams began visiting Japan in 1934, with all-stars like Lou Gehrig and Babe Ruth starting their tradition. In the 1950s, teams like the Dodgers learned that Japanese baseball was greatly improved. As the players got better, the fans grew louder. Later, Tom Seaver led the amazing Mets to Japan, but with the celebrated home run champ Sadaharu O oh leading the way, the Japanese proved just how well they're playing our game. What about this old guy? I'd like to meet him already. Me too. He's the greatest. He's more famous in Japan than Babe Ruth is in the United States. I've never heard of him. He can't be any good. Well, why don't we go ask the dugout wizard? I bet he can fill us in on this stuff. Yeah! yeah. All right, let's go. The baseball butts will return after these. Punch. With the mystery of Sadaharu O still unsolved, the bunch and I took off to see the wizard, while Rick argued that O couldn't be as good as his hero. Pete Rose is a switch hitter. He has over 3,000 career hits, and all of this is in the major leagues. How many hits does this guy have? Well, O has more home runs than Pete Rose. I know that. Which I think the wizard can answer all your questions. Well, Johnny, I don't know about answering all of the questions, but I do know a thing or two about the celebrated Mr. O. Home run means the same thing in Japanese, and O is the foremost authority on the subject. He broke in with the Tokyo Giants in 1959 and immediately showed tremendous power at the plate. In 1964, he set the Japanese record by hitting 55 home runs in a single season. In all, he played 22 seasons and led the Japanese leagues in home runs 15 times. Japanese, O means king. And when Sadahara retired in 1980, he was king of the home run. You know, Sadahara O is still in baseball, although not as a player. He is now a coach with the Tokyo Giants, and it just so happens that his team is visiting the United States, training with the Los Angeles Dodgers. Maybe. If I go disguised as the Dodgers manager, Tommy Lasorda, I'll be able to talk to him. Gosh, looks like we're finally going to get to meet him. Well, if he's as great as we hear he is, this should be some treat. Shh, let's see what happens. Hmm, this Dodger uniform sure feels good. I'll bet that Sadahara O will never know the difference between the wizard and Tommy Lasorda. I'm going to call Tommy's friend Maggie in. She's going to help me to communicate. Now, I don't want anybody to know that I'm really the wizard. Hi, Tom. Konnichiwa. Oh, very, very good. You've been practicing your Japanese. Arigato. Doitashimashite. Hey, I know what that means. That means you're welcome, because it sounds like, hey, don't touch your mustache. Well, that's very good. Well, what else do you know? I'm Kumpawa. Good evening. 
Ohio Kusama Mas. Good morning. And I know one more word. And what's that? Baseball. That's the same in every language. Okay, Hotshot. Let's go see Mr. Rowe. He's waiting for us. Yeah! Let's see what happens. Look, Bunch, the real Tommy Lasorda. And he's with the famous Sadaharu O. As the wizard told you, Mr. O is the assistant manager of the Tokyo Giants now. So he's working with the Dodgers manager to give his players some batting tips. Yeah, that's it. There you go. That's Come what on. he has to do. Now, this may sound strange to you, but it's really very simple. What Mr. O is telling his players is that you can't hit with just the top half of your body or your head will be flying away and you'll lose control. So make sure you use your legs and your hips and keep your eye on the ball. Hey, Bunch, Tommy Lasorda is leaving, so maybe the wizard can sneak in to see Mr. O. Then again, it may not be so easy. Even in Florida, 8,000 miles from Japan, Mr. O is always surrounded by autograph seekers. What's that say, Johnny? I don't know. But it's time for lights, camera, action. Because O is finally alone. And here comes the wizard. I don't know. Konnichiwa. Konnichiwa. Nice to see you, Sadahara. I want to know how you feel about uh, being here in this beautiful Dodger town. I think it's wonderful to have the chance to come to such a fine place with excellent facilities and also beautiful weather. Could you tell our youngsters how you got started into professional baseball and where? I tried to do everything when I was a youngster, hitting, throwing, and building an interest in all baseball skills. That's a good place to start, but you have to keep practicing, and eventually you'll get better. Certainly, another important factor is to have a good coach who can teach you the correct way, but it's very important to practice over and over again. Does he have any words of advice for the dugout wizard to be able to tell the youngsters something that will help them to improve their baseball play. You must believe in yourself. Believe in the possibilities. If I was able to hit 868 home runs, you should believe that you have a chance to do the same. So believe in the possibility and challenge it. Tell Sadahara O, for the benefit of the baseball bunch, we would like to watch him take batting practice because it would be great for the youngsters on the baseball bunch to see the greatest home run hitter ever in the history of Japan taking batting practice. Nolan Ryan or Tom Seaver. Yeah, but they have a lot of fine pitchers and a lot of other great players, too. They sure spoil their players and managers in Japan. Would you, would you tell them to please take it easy on us today? Uh, Only once. Only once. <laughs> Thank you. Good to see you again. As Steve Garvey and Sadaharu O prepare their teams, a member of the Japanese baseball bunch throws out the ceremonial first ball to Pete Rose. Whoops! <laughs> well, Rick, Pete Rose is still the favorite major leaguer of most Japanese fans. 
One of their favorite pitchers is named Yamada. And just watch this delivery. I think Dave Parker did better with chopsticks. Many Japanese players are good enough to play in our major leagues, so you can't take them lightly. The Braves' Phil Necro finds that out when he serves up his specialty to Koji Yamamoto. A knuckleball that doesn't knuckle is long gone at any ballpark. Now check out this reception awaiting Yamamoto. So you see, Rick, Japanese fans have plenty to cheer about. The baseball bunch will return. Bunch. You know, bunch here in the United States, we use the word teamwork. Well, the word for teamwork in Japan is teamwork. They believe in dedication, <laughs> discipline, and hard work, and really working together. It's not unusual for a player in Japan to show up at 10 o'clock in the morning for a night game. Johnny. I know that they play baseball very well in Japan, and that Mr. O is a great player, you know. But has he really got more home runs than Hank Aaron? He sure has. 714 was the magic number. Babe Ruth, the man who did it. That was the Babe's career home run total. And lots of people thought it was a record that would last forever. But while Ruth was the first of the great home run hitters, he was far from the last. In 1974, Hank Aaron broke the Babe's record with his 715th homer. He went on to hit 40 more, so the new magic number became 755. But over in Japan, Sadahara O was in hot pursuit, and in 1977, he hit number 756 to make him number one. He ran his final total of 868 career home runs before retiring in 1980. So, yes, Bunch, Sadahara O is baseball's all-time home run king. It's hard to believe. Until today, I knew almost nothing about the leading home run hitter of all time. Me neither. Hey, thanks, Freddie. Yeah! Our great ball pairs came from the USA. And now I know that baseball is universal. Uh-oh. I think you said the magic words. <coughs> What are the magic words for today, old dugout wizard? Today's magic words are, baseball is universal. We all know that baseball originated in the United States and that the game is our national pastime. But baseball is played everywhere. We have learned about Japan, but they also play baseball in Taiwan. In fact, they play it well enough to have won the Little League World Series eight of the last 10 years. Latin America has a number of leagues, and there's a long list of American players who play in the Winter League in places like Mexico and Puerto Rico. And speaking of lists, let me give you my all-world baseball team made up of major leaguers who were born outside of the United States. None other than Fernando Valenzuela is our lefty on the mound. Valenzuela is from a tiny town in Mexico, and he sure makes life pleasant for that Lasorda fellow. The righty hurler is the Cleveland Indians' Bert Blylevin, whose strikeout magic comes from the Netherlands. Expo catcher Bobby Ramos is from Havana, Cuba, but he's no foreigner to the extra base hit. At first base is California's Rod Carew, a seven-time batting champion from Panama, the home of the canal. Our second baseman is the brave Glenn Hubbard, who was born on an Air Force base in Germany. Now that's flying. Cincinnati's Dave Concepcion is our shortstop extraordinaire from Venezuela. Got him. Third baseman Dave McKay is one of the swinging maids, but he used to play for the Blue Jays. He was the first Canadian to play Major League Ball in Toronto. Giants outfielder Charlie Davis is from Kingston, Jamaica. His teammates call him Chili, and his fielding is hot stuff. 
Cesar Cedeno has been in Houston for 11 years, but the Astros star center fielder hails from the Dominican Republic. The Astros have another fellow in their outfield who might have arrived via a Caribbean cruise. His name is Jose Cruz, and he's from Puerto Rico. With Cedeno and Cruz, the Astro outfield is out of this world. Quite a team, hey, much? And to manage? Well, I've chosen Joey Amalfitano, the manager of the Chicago Cubs, who comes from San Pedro. That's San Pedro, California. <laughs> you didn't think the wizard was a comedian. So obviously, baseball is played everywhere, all over the world, north and south, east and west. 